and welcome to the first episode of 2022 of Full Bar. I hope you have a great holidays, whatever you celebrate, and here we are back. What we are going to do? Bring back recap! Yay! <laughs> you, I know you expect it. So during January and maybe a little bit over February, we are going to look on some of my favorites and more serverless launches through reInvent 2021. So we start with the first one and the first one is one of my favorites. I think it's my favorite. Uh, I was super happy that I got to write the launch blog for this one and now I get to show it to you. Kinesis Data Streams on demand. Yes! I know you are very excited about this one. So Kinesis Data Stream is a way to ingest data into uh, your applications. And before this launch, and actually still today, you need, uh, when you're not using the on-demand mode, you're using the, the standard mode, you need to tell Kinesis how many shards you need. So shards are this way of measuring the capacity of your stream. So if you configure, I want a stream with one shard, basically it can ingest around a thousand records per second. And that depends on your application. If you have an application that doesn't need to ingest a lot of records, then that's good. And you can increment the shards as much as you need. The thing that with everything, with capacity planning, you need to change that. Maybe you're planning to have a launch and you're planning to reach a lot of customers, so you need to increase it. And then the marketing campaign is down uh, and it's over. Christmas is over, January is coming and everything is more relaxed. So you need to increase the shorts down. So a lot of organizations have uh, systems in place to uh, increase and decrease the amount of shorts in a programmatic way or manually. <laughs> But, but they do that. But luckily, since reInvent 2021, now we can provision those streams on demand. The provisioning of the streams on demand is so simple. is when you create a new stream, you will see the capacity there and you can either provision the amount of shards you want or you select on demand. And that's it. Uh, it supports cloud formation, it supports CLI, SDKs, everything. It's super backwards compatible, like the API have not changed. So whatever was working for your Kinesis in the past is working now if you switch it on demand. You can do the switch a couple of times in a month and it's fine. You can go back and forth uh, from your traditional one to your on-demand one. And you can read those things in the documentation of Kinesis that is explain how you can do the switch back and forth uh, and what are the limitations there. But for showing you this, I want to do something interesting because, well, I can show you how to enable and disable this. It's, it's super simple. It will be a one minute video, but instead I want to show you a demo on how. If you have an existing Kinesis stream and you change it to the on-demand version, because you can do it right now, you can go to all your streams and do the change right now. How the stream adapts to the change and in a few minutes is performing on on-demand version and how everything works. So let's go to uh, my computer and see this in action. So I will create a new stream here and I will put the provision mode that is the standard one, that one that we define shards. And I will place uh, five shards in this uh, provision mode. So we are kind of simulating your existing uh, Kinesis streams. So let's create it and then we are uh, ready. So the stream takes a few minutes, a few seconds to uh, get ready. And then I will be using this um, external site that you can, you can access it. I will leave you the link in the description box that is called the Kinesis uh, Data Generator because I'm too lazy to make a demo and this tool does everything I need. So when you're using this tool, uh, you need to go to the configuration and what this configuration will do, you have a little button there you press and if you're logging to your AWS account in the right region, it will deploy a CloudFormation stack that basically has a Cognito and a couple of permissions there, Cognito is a pool, Cognito identity pool, and it will create that in your account and basically it will allow you then to log in 
with those Cognito permissions into this website. And then when you select the region, uh, you will be able to see all your streams. So this is super, super handy because then you don't need to <laughs> build a demo. And this site does a lot of things. So this site, uh, what it does, it can send events. So it will send events in a periodic way, like constant event, like 100 events per second, two, 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 two or you can put as the number you like, or then it can send it in a periodic way. And the periodic way is, <laughs> is I think the UI is not the best UI in the world, but it gets its job done super, super well. So you get a lot of options here and you can read them in the help. It's some kind of explain, but first thing you need to do is uh, for following this demo and also to make your life easier <laughs> is remove the real time lock. So then you can select your start and end time and you don't need to worry that your time is going forward or back like forward because real time goes only forward. Uh, so in this case, you can lock your uh, testing time to whatever hours and, and, and days you want. So that's good. Second thing you need to configure is the seconds of data per tick. So if you move this, then your data will be sending, uh, your, this application will be sending more data per seconds or less to simulate this, uh, because the real time is, is uh, kind of not real in the sense that it's not that uh, one hour is one hour, it will go faster. So this thing uh, does that. And the wait between ticks is how fast the time goes. Then you see a table there, and that table is a little bit complicated, but after you understand it, it's good. So I choose a Wednesday to do my test. So you can see there the 12th of December, uh, the 8th of December was the day that I choose. And I will do my test from 1 a.m. to 7 p.m. So because this is not using the real time, I have this table down here that I can configure the amount of events I want uh, this uh, system to send to my application from 1 a.m. to 7 p.m. So I go on the Wednesday and I go in this hourly kind of buckets and then I change it to the right value. So. I want first to start with a small uh, load. So you can see there that I will be sending 20 events in every second. And that sigma means the variability. So it will be 20 in the first one or uh, 21 or 20, 19. And then uh, the variability gets to five and things like that. So for the first hours, I will send 20 events per second. And, uh, and then when we get to hour four, then I will start sending a hundred events. So we have this provision stream with five shards and this starts to get events. And we will see when it can not handle it anymore. So basically by hour seven, we start sending 200 events and the events will keep on increasing. So in some point, you will see that the stream start throttling their records because with five shards, it cannot ingest all of this. So that's how Skinesis works. Uh, it starts throttling the records and then you can replay them. It's okay. Nothing gets lost. They get sore in the, in the, in the stream, but yeah, that's how it works. And then uh, you can see as we move over time, then around 11, uh, around hour 14, we start sending 400 and then around five, we send 500 and then we end. So you can see that the amount of records is increasing quite exponentially. And this will be represented in around maybe 15, 20 minutes, uh, the whole demo last. So it's more or less one minute per hour. So this happens very fast in the Kinesis world. So this is cool. So now we configure uh, this table with times and the input that we want. And what we'll we do now is we will configure the event. And in here you can configure um, what kind of uh, record template. I will not change that. I don't care about the record. So I will start sending data. And then you can see that records are being sent to the Kinesis stream that we selected. And that's good. Then I have configured a CloudWatch uh, dashboard. And this dashboard is basically uh, grabbing the metrics from the total records, the successful records, and the total records of uh, my stream. 
So the green and the blue will not be visible. You will only see green because they are overlapping. So that's good, at least for the beginning. When we are sending 20 records, everything is good. We are sending 100 records, everything is good. But when we start sending 200 records, things start um, getting nasty there. You can start seeing the blue line appearing and this is super speed up. You, I, I'm showing you this graph. This whole demo took me like half an hour and the whole demo here will be like a few minutes. So just letting you know when you tested this, this will take a while. And there you can see that the total record is um, around 400,000 and the total records are starting to spike. So our uh, provision stream cannot handle this. So what we are going to do now is to go to stream and change the capacity mode. We can do this through CLI, we can do this from uh, CloudFormation, uh, it doesn't matter. I will do it from the console. So I go to stream and while the stream is receiving data, while everything is working, I switch it to on demand. So that's good. Now uh, it will take a few seconds to update here and then it will take a few minutes to start uh, taking all the records from uh, that I'm sending. So what is happening now? So the stream is in five shards. So when I move it to the uh, on-demand mode, it will still be on five shards. So shards are still important when it comes to the on-demand because shards are the way that uh, Kinesis will partition your data. So even though you are on demand, if you exceed the amount of um, elements in a partition, it will start throttling. So that's something you have to have in mind, more information in the documentation. But partitions, uh, shards are still important for Kinesis. It's the way that uh, Kinesis is uh, sorting the data. So what will happen when it goes to the on-demand mode? It will start analyzing how much uh, capacity it needs. So we start increasing the amount of shards until it uh, each shard has, I think, like uh, half the load that it can take. So if every shard can take a thousand records, it will have um, uh, 500 records, like enough shards for 500 records or something like that. So it will have the double the amount of shards as a shards you need. And why is that? Because then if you have a peak, then it will be able to take the peak with no throttling uh, whatsoever. And the interesting thing here is that you only pay for the you know, capacity that you're consuming. So that uh, doesn't matter how Kinesis does the on-demand part, uh, you still um, get that uh, you are paying for what you're using. Now you will see that when we start uh, continuing this demo, then um, in some point the throttles will go down because now the stream got enough shards that it can uh, start taking uh, the load with no problem and then there will not be more throttles. But this is maybe now taking around 400,000 uh, messages, uh, 400 messages per second. And yeah, we still increase it a little bit more. So now we are in 500 messages per second, but the stream can still take it. And if you keep on increasing the, the, the load, it will still be able to take it. It just takes a little bit of, of time. So your initial capacity will be calculated on the peak on your last 30 days. So this is a uh, uh, how it goes. So if you move it, then uh, you will you will get that amount of shards by default at the beginning. But this is cool. Now my stream can increase um, and have as many um, uh, records sent as it needs. And when the capacity goes down, it will just uh, always be able to handle the load. So good, good. So that's the demo for me today. I wanted to share this with you. If you like this type of video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and all that things. And I leave you the link for the blog post I write. Uh, there is more explanation. There is more details on uh, the migration and the moving around and also in the capacity and all that. And also the documentation links for you to continue investigating. And I see you next week with another video about a reinvent launch. So have a great day. Bye bye.